Coming up today features a matchup between the two best teams outside of Purdue in the Big Ten, if you ask me. And also, let's take another look at how we're approaching bracketology. Take a look at how different sites are comparing where they're putting Big Ten teams. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Locked On Big Ten. I'm your host, Nate Dickinson. Today's show is brought to you in part by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Let's dive right into what we're starting off the show with, and that's a look at the big games coming up here tonight, particularly a ranked matchup between number 24 Rutgers and number 18 Indiana and the Hoosiers. Just days off of knocking off Purdue and Bloomington, Indiana is going to come back on the home court and try to get another big ranked win against the Scarlet Knights. Keep up that momentum that's right now won them six of their last seven. So, what does each team have here as we go into this matchup? We've talked a lot about Indiana over the last few days here on this show in the last couple of weeks. Hoosiers are, I'll say it again, the hottest team in the entire conference. And after beating Purdue, I don't think there's really any doubt of that right now. But they're coming up against a Rutgers team that obviously knows what it's doing on both sides of the basketball is, as I mentioned right off the top, in my opinion, behind Indiana, the third best team in the Big Ten right now. This is Indiana facing off against the two other best teams in the conference, beating Purdue and getting a chance to get a win here against Rutgers as well. So a big opportunity for them, a big opportunity for Rutgers as well too, to solidify and move up the bracket even more. And when you look at what Rutgers is right now, it's a team that's still really good. It's a team that is a solid NCAA tournament team, which has not always been in that spot this season. So you got to be really happy. But when you look at the recent game for Rutgers, they haven't gotten that huge win, that kind of signature win as of late to kind of reassert themselves as a contender, not only in the Big Ten, but to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. In Rutgers' recent games, they've kind of lost against teams that haven't been terribly great. They beat Michigan State, but also lost once against Michigan State. Rutgers has lost to Iowa as well, but beaten teams like Northwestern, Ohio State, Minnesota, teams that are either at the bottom of the Big Ten or floating on that bubble and in an Ohio State case, absolutely falling apart right now. So when you're looking at those games that Rutgers has had lately, it's not exactly like they've gotten any sort of big convincing win. Rutgers is in that area of like Indiana and Iowa now that they've gotten a couple of good wins. And where they're at in the bracket projections, and we're going to get to that in the next segment on the show. But Rutgers hasn't gotten that kind of big win, at least as recently as the other teams around it have. This, of course, a big opportunity to get one on the road against an Indiana team that's, of course, hitting its stride right now. As far as what we're actually going to see on the court, Indiana's trying to make it seven wins in its last eight. Jacob Rood said that the Hoosiers won't be getting back to their preseason like expectations of, say, winning the Big Ten anytime soon. But as far as their preseason rankings, Indiana's very much in the driver's seat to get back near that top 10 ranking if they can pull off this win. It would be two big ranked wins. I'm surprised Indiana honestly didn't move up further in the latest AP polls after beating Purdue. But they've got themselves a shot, I think, to re-put themselves into a spot to be a top four seed in the NCAA tournament and also maybe climb even further if they can continue to win. The big test for Indiana, though, I think is going to be trying to deal with whatever it is that this Rutgers perimeter defense is going to throw at it. Purdue has a really good defense on the inside, and Indiana has proved it can play with that. The Hoosiers have proved that they can play with just about any team that's going to get big and physical with them. It was able to out duel Zach Eady, despite Eady having a really, really good game, of course. So in what Indiana was able to do there, the only real question left for them is then, what do you do against a really good defensive teams on the perimeter? Rutgers gives up less than 60 points per game. So as a whole, their defense is outstanding. But it's a different kind of strength than what you're facing off against when you have that Purdue team there. 
Purdue was really good, of course, with Edie and stopping guys inside. Now you have a team that's going to try and stop you at that perimeter. And if you struggle to move the ball around at the start of a set offense like that, can Indiana get that consistent offense going? Because a lot of Indiana's strength on offense is overpowering you. Being able to run in transition, work quickly and efficiently, but also get the high percentage shots by bullying you round two. When things do slow down a bit, which Rutgers is likely going to do because it's a team that's good on defense, how does Indiana respond? Do you get a game like what you saw against Purdue? Or is this Indiana team going to show up and be a little bit more like what it was when it lost by 11 to Maryland last week? The only loss it's taken in recent memory, by the way. A big chance for the Hoosiers and a big opportunity for both teams. And also, by the way, a big implication for Big Ten tournament seedings, too. As it stands right now, as I said, I think these are the two best teams outside of Purdue in the Big Ten. But that does not mean that's where it's going to end up at the end of the Big Ten season. As of right now, with Rutgers at four Big Ten losses, you have yourself 10 teams from second place all the way down to what would be 11th place that are within one game of each other. That's where it's at. So every game matters. And in this head-to-head matchup, a huge, huge battle between these two teams for Rutgers to either take the season series after beating Indiana way back when in December, or for Indiana to tie things up and, of course, get themselves a big win over the Rutgers team that's a game ahead of everybody else. It's going to be a really big game tonight. It's going to be possibly a little bit of a letdown game for Indiana. If you're looking for something to be positive for, for Rutgers, they're coming off the big win. They may just not have enough in their left to run through another full 40 minutes, but we'll see. What I do know is everyone in Bloomington is going to be hyped up for this one after what happened on Saturday. It's going to be a really, really fun matchup and one that I'm really looking forward to, almost as much as you look forward to that great game that we had against Purdue and Indiana. In the other matchup here tonight, Maryland and Michigan State, a couple of teams that are pretty safely in the tournament right now. Maryland, a projected seven seed, according to Joe Lenardi's latest bracket, and Michigan State, a projected nine seed. So a chance for both teams to get themselves a win that can really work themselves further up the bracket. Uh, we'll talk about this in the next segment, but Big Ten is starting to separate a little bit. There were times where these teams might be a little bit closer to the edge and need this win a little more. As it stands, they're both pretty safe by taking what would be a good loss against another solid tournament team but there's of course always big falls to be had and you never know when like a again Michigan State a projected nine seed how far they could fall depending on what everyone else does with say just one loss according to like the advanced metrics and things like that Uh, the one stat that I will say sticks out in this game Michigan State does not give up second chances And also, Maryland doesn't really get that many. Michigan State's a top 20 team when it comes to defensive rebounding. Maryland outside the top 100 when it comes to getting offensive boards. So if you're ending up playing a close game there near the end, as these two teams very well could be in a game where Maryland's at least statistically the better team, but Michigan's at home, in that battle there, it could be that kind of a difference that ends up pushing a team like Michigan State and Tom Izzo's squad to a home win. That's the one stat that stuck out to me, just looking at what both of these teams are able to do. So let's look at the two games here today. We also did have the canceled game that will not be played here this evening in the Big Ten. So only two games on the slate, but we'll get to that full Big Ten schedule and everything else you need to know from around Big Ten news here in just a little bit on Locked On Big Ten. First, though. When we've done bracket talk here on the show, we've basically stuck to Joe Lenardi. He is my favorite guy as far as putting a bracket together before Selection Sunday. But he's not the only one. So I figured, why is it that we're only taking the one source for our sample size? Let's compile some things, not only get a more accurate idea of what people are thinking, but also compare what different sites are saying about different Big Ten teams and where they stand in the tournament. We'll get to that here in just a minute on Locked On Big Ten. Before we continue on with the show, though, if you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all of the fat and calories that you usually get with that, then you got to try Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little bit healthier this year, get myself in some better shape. It's a lot of people's goals, and Built Bar can help you do it because this is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, and I'm sure there's protein bars that claim to taste good. I'm sure there's protein bars that do taste really good, but when you look at it, aren't really all that healthy for you. Built Bar is all packed into one. 
it really does taste outstanding and you get yourself a package that has less than 130 calories, more than 17 grams of proteins, and less than four grams of carbs and sugars in these bars too. It looks like a candy bar when you open it up and take it out of the package. It tastes like a candy bar when you're eating it and it gives you everything that you need to get through the workout, the day, whatever it is that you need that extra protein for. Head on over to built.com and see what I'm talking about. They're coming out with new flavors all the time. So if you happen to have one that you don't quite feel like tastes just like a candy bar, you can go and check out the number of different flavors that Built Bar is always coming out with and different kinds of products too. Different ways to make sure that you have the energy to get yourself through your day at built.com. It's been with Locked On forever and we really do love the way these things taste. Head on over to built.com and just try it out. We'll let you, you will know what we're talking about. Let's continue along and get into what I'm saying here with what we're going to do with a look at bracketology. And this is something that I want to do from now on when we talk about just where teams are at the moment, because we can put together instead of just looking at one source in what has been Joe Lenardi's ESPN brackets when he puts them out. And he is the king when it comes to this stuff. But there are other places that are doing this almost daily too. And there are other ways to look at how we put together our brackets. So I think that it's better this way just to put together a whole bunch of different sites and put together a composite ranking of where each Big Ten team stands. But at least to start off, I wanted to take a look at where everyone has the different Big Ten squads. Uh, first off, four places we're going to look at, at least for now. I may look more and see if there's other places that do similar things. But right now I have ESPN, of course, CBS's brackets, the team rankings brackets. And when we look at like team rankings, when I say that Michigan State is top 20 in defensive rebounds, I'm going over to team rankings to look at that site. It's something I trust. And when they do their simulations, it's more of an advanced stats look at things. So when you see those rankings, think about more, okay, this is what the numbers in the computer simulations say the best teams in the country are. And then also I put in USA Today, puts together the coaches, polls, does a whole lot, of course, in college sports rankings respectable bracket to put on there too. Maybe others on there too is when I look more again, but that's what I have for now. So those are the four sources. First thing I noticed more than anything else probably is that there is a big separation and agreement right now across the sites of the teams that are in the conversation in the Big Ten and the teams that have fallen out. There are right now pretty much across the board eight Big Ten teams that are either in or close to in and then two other Big Ten teams that are in the mix as well. And then you have four teams, Ohio State, Michigan, Nebraska, and Minnesota, that pretty much don't show up across the board here. They could easily play their way back into it if you're an Ohio State or a Michigan team by getting a whole lot of wins here. But at least where things stand, those two teams, those two rivals that just faced off, are not right now really in the conversation even. They're not even on the bubble. So where does everybody else land? Well, at the top, of course, is Purdue. There are one seat across the board. There are some big differences, though, when you go further down the bracket, starting off with, I want to say, Penn State. Because now across the board, it's pretty much a consensus that the eight teams that the Big Ten has had pretty solidly in are in. And there's two bubble teams, Penn State and Michigan, that are right now on the outside looking in. But how far out? some places have Penn State, is really different across the board. For instance, I have Penn State at the moment with a few different teams between them and making the field, like three or four maybe. And that's where I thought it was pretty much a consensus across the board, but it's not quite there. For instance, CBS has Penn State as the first team out of the field of 68, while the team rankings projections and simulations have Penn State as the 13th team out of that field. So of course, again, a big, big difference between those two things. Uh, on the other ones, ESPN has Penn State as the eighth team out, and CBS has, or I'm sorry, USA Today, the fifth team out. Wisconsin's a little bit more of the same. In, in two different projections, Wisconsin is higher than Penn State in the current projected fields, but also in two others on the team rankings, or I'm sorry, the CBS and USP, USA Today polls, it's Penn State that's closer to getting into the tournament field. So those two bubble teams are very much varied in how far out they are. So obviously, if you're one of those fan bases, neither of them is headed in the right direction. Both of them really need to start winning here because 
the inconsistency there is really just a testament to the inconsistency that we've seen from those two teams as of late. Get some wins, get yourself back into that field. Northwestern was another team that had a little bit of a discrepancy across the board. Uh, like ESPN has Northwestern as a nine seed, but both the team ranking simulations and USA Today put the Wildcats as an 11 seed, basically squarely back on the bubble. That was something I thought the Wildcats had played themselves a little bit further off of. But according to a couple of different spots, that's not the case. One thing I did notice across the board, if you're looking at different projections on different sites for where you're going daily, ESPN in general treated Big Ten teams just a little bit better, about a seed better when you go further down than what CBS had it as. Purdue's a one seed on both boards. Indiana's a five seed on both boards. Iowa's a six seed, but then things change a little bit. For instance, Rutgers on ESPN is a projected five seed, but on CBS's latest bracket, they're a seven seed. In Illinois, they're projected six on ESPN, seven on CBS. Michigan State and Northwestern, both are projected nine on ESPN, a 10 on CBS. One thing that is a little bit different, though, CBS has both Minnesota or both Penn State and Wisconsin in the first four out, real close to getting back into the tournament. ESPN has both those teams with a few different teams in between them and that tournament bubble. So it's a little bit of a varied take on where everyone stands in the Big Ten, which I think is why things get valuable when you start to be able to put these things and seedings together. Uh, other notes I had just on things that I'm noticing when I'm reading throughout here. Uh, the chance for teams to get a win and move up the bracket are even more important when you go further down this list. Because when you go from top to bottom, there's a very closely packed group that's pretty consistent at the top. The teams like Purdue, obviously, but Indiana, Rutgers, uh, even in Illinois, those teams have separated themselves as kind of pretty consistently in that five, six, maybe even four range. USA Today had Indiana as a top four seed. But when you go further down, you have much more disagreement about where you're at. That's not always the case. There can at times be some pretty firmly cut kind of divisions as you go down further that bracket. But there's, again, as I said, Northwestern's projections are anywhere from a 9 to an 11 seed. And that really changes how important you feel about these next games and every game that Northwestern plays down the stretch. If I'm seeing Northwestern as an 11 seed right now, I'm seeing them as barely in the tournament. If they're a nine seed, they've got wiggle room, wiggle room. There's a big difference here. So I'm interested in trying to exactly see what goes on as we get closer to Selection Sunday. And do things start to get a little bit more consistent here as we get more of a sample size of what these teams are doing? And of course, the biggest question, can Penn State and Wisconsin get themselves back on the right side of things? Because there is a agreement that there are eight Big Ten tournament teams right now, two more that could make it, but are not in the tournament as it stands. There isn't a single source here, even though CBS had Penn State as the first team out. There isn't a single place that has either Wisconsin or Penn State in the tournament, despite all of them being really close. So agreement on who's in, disagreement on where exactly they sit in the bracket, which means that for some teams closer to that bubble, you may be a little bit less secure in where you're at, depending on where you're looking, which is very, very interesting to think about when you're thinking of it from a fan standpoint. The point being, we're going to start to just put these numbers together and make a composite ranking of this and whatever else it is that comes up in when we get maybe a couple of more sources in there and try to get you a more accurate reading of where the experts have every Big Ten team. Because going off of just one guy, even if it is the best of the best, in my opinion, and Joe Lenardi, just doesn't seem too smart. We're going to wrap up the show with Big Ten news, get you the schedule for today in basketball and anything else that you need to know around the conference. But before we do that, the only app that you need for your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. We're really excited about the new sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network because they're the number one sports book in the country. It's FanDuel. And if you're new to the site, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. And right now you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 bet in bo back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads and props like who will score a touchdown. So you can go on there and have confidence that you'll be able to find anything that you want to bet on here this Super Bowl Sunday. And of course, 
Big Ten basketball is in full swing and getting bigger and bigger by the day. You can bet on your team or just make the right picks over at FanDuel too. They got lines on everything across all the sports landscapes. Go join FanDuel today at locked or at fanduel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, let's get going here. Big 10 news to wrap things up. Uh, tickets for the Big Ten Women's Basketball Tournament are on sale today. It'll take place in Minneapolis. That's a change. And you can go take a look again because it's going to be, in my opinion, easily the most entertaining conference tournament in all of college basketball. Big Ten has been killing it this season. And you're going to want to go see some of the best teams across the bracket in the country battle for that Big Ten title in Minneapolis. Big Ten Players of the Week, Trace Jackson Davis and Zach Eady share Player of the Week honors again. It's Illinois' Jaden Epps, the freshman of the week. For Eady, that's the sixth time this season he's been named to the award that ties an all-time Purdue record. Also, the Big Ten Three Stars of the Week on the ice for men's hockey. MSU's Dylan St. Cyr, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, that St. C-Y-R, the goalie for Michigan State, is the first star of the week. He's followed up by Michigan's Gavin Brindley and Ohio State's Stephen Halliday, those both forwards. And finally, the gymnasts of the week, Penn State's Matt Cormier is the gymnast of the week, and freshman is of the week is Michigan's Landon Blixt, as those two awards go to those two gymnasts. A Big Ten schedule is only men's basketball for the day. Number 24, Rutgers at number 18, Indiana at 7 p.m. Of course, that's going to be a huge one as those two teams get ready for battle in Bloomington. And then Maryland at Michigan State is at 9 p.m. tonight. That game is my bet for the day as well, too. I'm going Terps plus three and a half on the road at Michigan State. Risky to bet on a road team in a game in which I do think these two teams are pretty evenly matched. But I like Maryland just because I don't think the Spartans offense will be able to do too much against what that Terrapins defense has and how good it can be. I would not like I'm looking forward to seeing if someone can be that step up guy for Sparty. But with the, what Michigan, what Maryland does on defense, I just feel like it matches up well with what Michigan State tries to do on offense. I'm taking three and a half points and Maryland on the road. In recruiting news, only note to ha- to give you a three-star 2024 quarterback, A.J. Sarasi, Sarace, S-U-R-A-C-E, we'll learn his name. He commits to Rutgers out of New Jersey, an in-state product. Also had other Big Ten offers, though, from Indiana, Michigan State, and Northwestern as well. Thanks for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen today. For your second listen, be sure to check out our new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court. Plus, hear from the big-name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. This has been Locked On Big Ten. Be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube at Locked On Big Ten, one zero at the end, not T-E-N. Once again, I'm Nate Dickinson at Nate with Sports. We'll be back tomorrow with more on everything that happens here tonight around the Big Ten. This is Nate Dickinson with Locked On.